With more options than ever to choose from, it can be tough to figure out what works best for you and what you can make great images with in street photography. That being said, I wanna help bring you back down to earth and give you three more examples of street photography gear that you don't need. First is gonna be an autofocus lens. With the evolution of photography tech, marketing, etc., new and experienced photographers alike are often convinced that the fastest autofocus possible will get you to the apex of the photography experience. And autofocus is great. You have your red or green box, it's mostly accurate, and in times of their spontaneous changes, it can definitely be useful. But it can also be extremely frustrating. Now in street photography, manual focus can be superior to autofocus in more ways than one if you do it right. Because while autofocus has to still find focus, preset zone focus is already there. Now you'll have the best experience with wider lenses such as 28 or 35 millimeter because they help for expanding your overall viewing angle. And photographing at apertures between f8 and f11 maximizes your depth of field which increases your chances of getting a sharp photo while still giving you adequate light gathering. After that, setting your distance scales based on where you feel your closest subjects will usually be on the street is a nice place to begin experimenting. Now math goes into this that I can't really sit all day and explain, but for example, if you have a full frame equivalent 35 millimeter lens set at F8 and you have your scale set to around eight feet, then everything from roughly five to 15 feet will be in sharp enough focus. You feel unstoppable when you're doing it right, and it's added a refreshing element to my process that gives a nice change up from autofocus when I need it. The second piece of street photography gear that you absolutely don't need is a small camera. Now don't get me wrong, I absolutely 100% advocate for compact kits if you can get your hands on one. But as someone who found his stride in street photography while using the Fujifilm X-H1, I've seen that the whole idea of larger gear means more intimidating is absolutely nonsense. It asserts this weird idea that you're going to be putting everybody off, they'll be clutching the pearls, calling the authorities while you're doing photography. But during my time with the X-H1, A7 III, Nikon Z6, and most recently the X-T4 and the big 33 millimeter 1.4, I've had nothing but engaging, fun interactions with people that I've been blessed to meet. A lot of this just seems like overthinking on the photographer's part. These overwhelmingly positive results have been the case since I first ever made a street photograph when I was trash. And it's not because of the size of a camera or any camera at all, but because of who I am and my social and artistic skills. Now it's understandable to be a bit self-conscious, especially in the beginning, and think to yourself, you know, wow, this camera's gigantic, I probably look insane. But if you think for five seconds past that, if you're constantly being scoffed and sneered at while you're doing street photography, it's probably not because of the size of your camera. It might just be because of you. Overall, I think you'll have a more comfortable time with the smaller camera, just because it's less weight to carry. But street photography is absolutely possible with the larger body. You don't have to psych or price yourself out of the game just because you might not have one right now. And last but certainly not least, you do not need a prime lens. See, a couple years back, we had a Nat Geo street photographer on assignment documenting downtown Cleveland for whatever his project was. I didn't get to speak to him, but while on one of his earliest photo walks with this Canon EOS R and 24-105 kit lens, an old friend of mine did. And according to my friend, the Nat Geo guy scolded him for his choice of gear. He allegedly said, you can't use zoom lenses for street photography. You're supposed to use primes. You need to zoom with your feet. You are lazy. You're saying this to a beginner. Now, I wanna take my photography as far as worldly possible. I have a grip on what I like and what my style is at this time, but I understand that some of you are just starting out. Maybe this is just a hobby for you. You're not trying to get your photos into the MoMA, but even if you were, zoom lenses take pictures just like prime lenses can. So why not use one if it's all you can afford, it's all you got, or it's just what you wanna do. You hear me talk a lot about the benefits of creative restriction that primes often come with in street photography, but you can do that with a zoom lens. Put it on one focal length for the week, for the month, etc., and there you go. All it takes is discipline. Zoom lenses these days are extremely sharp, well-performing, fast-focusing, and they're versatile especially in those pinch situations where you can't reach into your bag and switch to a different prime. There's so many weird rules about the right way to do street photography. You'll see that you need to be stealthy, wear all black, you need to use a compact camera, but I'm currently doing street photography with an X-T4, a reasonably big prime, five inch shorts, and a pearl necklace. Obvious as possible. If you see me, cool. If you don't, 
cool. People don't get intimidated by me and they don't get intimidated by a lot of other street photographers that I know. They're actually very comfortable around me and they often tell me that. I enjoy these interactions, they do as well. And while I see the value in being a fly on the wall, I do not see the value in constantly trying to hide from people. Street photography doesn't have to be this restrictive craft that it sometimes sounds like. You won't find me advocating for anything that I don't believe in on this channel. And if there's anything that I don't above anything else, you should not hide your personality or stray away from what works best for you just because it is in vogue. That's not to say not to challenge yourself, but if you shield your personality in your photography process, you have one of the main things that separates you from everybody else not being a factor anymore. There is countless aspects to how I photograph that probably don't meet the strict definition of street photography, but I don't care. I like my work. And not to mention, everybody I've ever looked up to artistically was an absolute rule breaker. But hey, I'm just a messenger. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a better idea of what you can and cannot do, what you should and should not do in street photography as it pertains to you. And I'll see you in the next one.